Hi there and welcome to Penguin Learning. In this National Full Maths video, we will be looking at the relationships between distance, speed and the time. After watching this video, you will know how these three things are related to one another and how we can measure each of these three things. We will learn how to solve real life problems using the distance, speed and the time for moving objects and we will also learn how to convert units for the distance, the speed and the time so that we can get the correct answer needed for our problem. So, let's get started. Ooh la la. Okay, so distance, speed and time. What are they and how do they relate to one another? Well, imagine we have a car that starts at point A and it travels along to point B. Well, there is three things that we can measure from the car's journey. The first would be the distance between point A and point B, or in other words, how far the car has travelled, and this may be measured in metres, kilometres or miles, just depending on the scale of the task. The second thing that we can measure would be the speed of the car, so did the car move very slowly from A to B like this, or did it travel fast like that, and to measure that we have to know the speed. So the speed can be measured in things like kilometres per hour, miles per hour or metres per second just depending on the task. And the final thing that we can measure would be the time. So in other words how long did it take for the car to travel from point A to point B. So it could have been slow or it could have been fast and we can measure this in seconds, minutes, hours or days once again just depending on the task. Now the thing is between distance, speed and the time we can use each one of these to calculate the other one because these are all related variables in a task like this such as a car moving from point A to point B. All of these tie into one another and that means that we can form a relationship between speed, distance and time. And probably one of the easiest ways to remember the relationships between distance, speed and time is by using this triangle in this fashion. So what we have here is the distance on top of the triangle and beneath the distance we have both the speed and the time. But what does this mean in terms of the relationship? Well basically, if we select which of the variables that we want to calculate, then the other two variables are left in a position which looks like the formula to calculate that one variable. So let's first have a look at distance. Because distance is on the top, we are left with both speed and the time on the bottom. And because these two other variables are together, it almost looks as if they can be multiplied by each other. So that means that the formula for distance is just equal to the speed multiplied by the time as we have here. Next up, if we want to calculate the speed, which is on the bottom, we are left with distance on the top and time also on the bottom. And that means that it's almost like we have distance divided by the time. And that gives us the formula for the speed as we can see here, which is just simply the speed is equal to the distance divided by the time. And then finally, the last variable that we might want to calculate would be the time. So that means we're left with distance on the top of the triangle and speed on the bottom. So that would mean that the formula for calculating the time would be equal to the distance divided by the speed. So in order to remember the three relationships between speed, distance and time, all we really need to remember is this triangle with the three variables and that distance lies on the top with speed and time both on the bottom. And sometimes each of the three variables are just shortened to the first letter. So we have D for distance on the top, S for speed and T for time. So the next thing that I want to talk about, about distance, speed and time is units. Because the units for each of these three variables are really, really important when we go to solve problems and use calculations. So first looking at distance, what are some common measurements or units of distance? Well, we could have meters which would just simply be denoted as M. We could have kilometers, and we may also have miles as well. And of course, this distance can also be shorter, so we can also have things like centimeters, millimeters, and so on. But normally for distance speed time problems, the distance is normally a little bit larger than the need for centimeters. So the most common ones are meters, kilometers, and miles. Moving on to time, well, Time has also a number of measurements. The first or the smallest one that we typically use in distance speed time problems are seconds, which we just write as S. We may also have minutes. 
we can also have hours or we may also be given a time in a combination so let's say hours plus minutes so let's say for example we might be given a time of 1 hour and 15 minutes which means we have a combination of both hours and minutes in our problem for the time and then finally having a look at the units for speed well basically the units for speed is a combination between the units for distance and time so for example one common thing we see in speed on the motorways here in the UK would be a speed limit in miles per hour so that's a combination of miles for distance and also hours in time so we have miles per hour that's one way of measuring speed but if our distance is in kilometers then we can have our speed in kilometers per hour or maybe our distance is in meters and our times in seconds so that means our speed can also be measured in meters per second now this may seem a little bit confusing why we have all these different units but the only key thing that we have to remember is that our units are consistent so let's say for example we are given a problem where the distance is measured in meters and the time is in seconds then that would mean that the speed must be measured in meters per second and likewise if we have a distance in kilometers and the time is given in hours then that means that the speed is going to be given in kilometers per hour so the units must be consistent when we solve problems this will be a little bit more clear when we go on to this next example and you'll see what I mean by this. So this first example says Graham cycles at an average speed of 8 km per hour. How far has he travelled if he cycles for 4 hours? So the first thing that I would do in a question like this is look at the question in detail and find out what it's asking us to calculate. So we'd asked how far has he travelled and if we asked how far is something that means that we are being asked to figure out a distance. And within the question, we are told that Graham moves at an average speed of 8 km per hour, so that is our S, and he also travelled for 4 hours, and we know that 4 hours is a time. And looking at our triangle, we know that if we want to calculate the distance, the relationship between distance, speed and time would be the distance, or D, is equal to S multiplied by T. Now that we know our relationship, the next thing that I would do is check the units of the information that we've been given. So our time is in hours and our speed is in kilometers per hour. So we have the same in both of these for the time, we have hours and hours. And that because we have kilometers per hour, that means that for the calculation that we do, the distance is going to be in kilometers. So we can say that D is equal to the speed, which is eight kilometers per hour multiplied by the 4 hours and then simply 8 times 4 is equal to 32 and what would be the units? Kilometers. Now this next question asks us to find the speed of a train which travels at 243 kilometers in 2 hours and 15 minutes. So again the first thing that I would always do is identify what we're being asked to figure out and in this case it's to find the speed. So because of that, I'm just going to highlight speed inside our little triangle. And the question gives us a distance, which we can see here, and then a time. So now we have a relationship. We can write out that the speed is equal to the distance divided by the time. So the next thing that we have to consider is the units in all three of our variables. So for our distance, our units is in kilometers, and our time is in both hours and minutes. Now to get the units for speed, we have to use a combination of the units presented to us in both the distance and the time. So that would mean that it would be kilometers per whatever measurement we want to use for time. But we can't have kilometers per hour and minute. It has to either be kilometers per hour or kilometers per minute. So we have to choose and do something with our time units. And for a train that's moving, it's more common to have our speed in kilometers per hour. So that means that I'm going to sort the time units and convert it from both hours and minutes into just hours. So what I can say is the time is equal to 2 hours plus 15 minutes. And so now what we have to do is convert the minutes part of our time into hours because the 2 hours is already in hours but we have to ask how much is 15 minutes, how much is this represented within the time frame of an hour. 
Well, the way we can do this is so we have the t is equal to two hours plus the 15 minutes, and we know that 60 minutes makes up an entire hour, so 15 divided by 60 is the fraction in which 15 minutes takes up upon the hour. So 15 over 60 is the same thing as one quarter or one over four. And if we do this, we are left with a time of 2.25 hours, just converting the quarter into a decimal. Or in other words, this 15 minutes represents 0.25 of an hour. So now we have our units sorted out, so we can then say that the speed s is equal to our distance, which we said was 243 kilometers, and now that's divided by 2.25 hours. And if we do this calculation, that gives us an answer of 108 kilometers per hour. And that's the answer with the correct units. So in order to solve that last question, we have to know how to convert between minutes and hours. And for that question there, we had to figure out a way to convert 15 minutes into something of a fraction or a decimal of an hour. And how we did that was take the amount of minutes and divide it by the total amount of minutes that make up an hour. And that gave us an answer of 0.25 hours. Well, how about we try this thing going from hours to minutes? So let's say we want to convert 0.5 hours into minutes. And to do this, instead of dividing by the 60, what we do is multiply by the 60. So that would just mean 0.5 hours in minutes would be 0.5 multiplied by 60. And that would give us an answer of 30 minutes. And of course, this makes sense because we know half an hour or 0.5 hours is just equal to 30 minutes. So for question number three, we are told that David cycles at five miles per hour and covers a distance of 16 miles. And we're asked, how long does this journey take? So again, if we're asked how long something will take, then we are being asked to figure out the time. And that means that in the question, we have information for the distance and the speed. So therefore, looking at a triangle, the relationship is time is equal to distance divided by speed. The units for distance is in miles and speed is in miles per hour. So because that's the case, our time is going to be in hours. So we would have the time is equal to 16 divided by the 5. And that would give us an answer of 3.2 hours. Now it's a little bit strange if you were to say to someone how long did the journey take and they were to say, oh, 3.2 hours. It would be much more common to give the answer in both hours and minutes. So we know that it's 3.2 hours. So that means it's going to be 3 hours and 0.2 of an hour, which we can figure out in minutes. So let's do that just now. If we have an additional 0.2 of an hour and we want to convert it into minutes, we can just simply multiply it by 60 and that gives us an answer of 12. So that means 0.2 of the hour represents 12 minutes. So therefore, our time would be equal to 3 hours and 12 minutes. So let's look at one final question. We are told that Monica runs from 3.20 p.m. to 4.10 p.m. at an average speed of six kilometers per hour. And how far did she travel? So again, the same as before, step one, identify what we are being asked for. We can see here we are asked how far. So that means that we're asked to figure out a distance. So that would mean that our relationship is distance is equal to the speed multiplied by the time. So in the question, we are given the value for the speed, which is six kilometers per hour, but we aren't specifically given a value for the time. We are just told that she runs from 3.20 to 4.10. So we have to use this information to calculate what the time would be for our relationship. So dealing with the time, we know that she runs from 3.20 to 4.10. So we have to calculate how many minutes in total this is first. Well, we know that from 3.20 to 4, there's going to be 40 minutes that she ran for because there's 60 minutes in total. So if she ran from 3.20 to 4, that would be 40 minutes. And if that's what it was at 4 o'clock and she finished at 4.10, then there's going to be an additional 10 minutes to make up that time. So that means in total, from 3.20 to 4.10, she ran for 50 minutes. So now we have actually have a value for the time that she ran for, 
we have to consider our units. So the speed is given in kilometers per hour, so that would mean that the distance is likely to be in kilometers for a final answer, but because it's kilometers per hour, that would mean that the time should also be in hours, so we have to convert this 50 minutes into hours. And to do this, we would just divide the 50 by the 60 minutes that makes up the hour, and this would give us an answer approximately equal to 0 0.83 hours to two decimal places. So now we have S and T both in the right units, we can then just say that the distance is equal to the speed, so 6, multiplied by 0 0.83, and if we do this, this is going to give us an answer of 5 kilometers. So again, the key thing with questions like these is, is to bear in mind what units we have to use and how to get our information in the correct form so that we can put it in our triangle relationship between distance, speed and time. Okay, so let's recap this lesson on distance, speed and time. So the key thing to remember is, if we have any object that's moving from point A to point B, we can measure its distance its speed and its time and each three of these variables are related through the distance speed and time triangle so we have distance on the top and both speed and the time on the bottom and we can calculate one of these variables by selecting the one which we want to calculate and then the other two represent what the sum should look like and when we go to solve any distance speed time problem the first thing that we always should do is identify from the question what we're being asked to calculate so for the time, we might be asked things like how long, the distance may ask us things like how far, and for the speed, we might just be simply asked for the average speed or how fast or slow the moving object was travelling. The next thing that we would do is write down the relationship by taking into consideration the distance, speed and time triangle. We would then identify or convert the correct units needed to solve the problem, so that would mean that we have to identify the units for the variable we are solving for but then also converting units from the information that we're given within the question. And then finally, once we have everything in the correct order, then we can just simply solve the problem and get the right answer for either the distance, the speed, or the time. So thanks a lot for watching again, I hope this video has been helpful to you. And if that's been the case, make sure and give the video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to check out our website at penguin-learning.com and also subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.